In this video, I am going to show you how to configure Belden 2K15X Wi-Fi router. First, I am going to log in the router. For that, I am going to find the IP address. Take the run and type in cpa.cpl. Find the network adapter with which we are connected with the router. And then take the properties. Then find the IP of router. Here we can see default gateway IP. That is our router IP address. Here the IP is 192.168.1.1. I am logging with the browser. If I am typing the same IP in the browser, we will get the option to log in router. Default username and password is admin admin. If you are changing the password, you need to use the same password for login. Here I am going to show you how to change the Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password. This is a dual band router. So we need to set the password for 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. Both are separately we need to configure. First I am going to show you 2.4 GHz. For that we need to choose WLAN. Then 2.4G basic. Here we can change only the basic settings. SSID name that means Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password. Once after changing the Wi-Fi name and password, we can press the Apply Changes button. Then only it will save. Don't forget, if you are connected with the Wi-Fi, you will lose the connectivity of Wi-Fi and router. You need to log in with the new SSID and new password. Here I am not changing any SSID and password. If you want to active, if you want to disable this Wi-Fi, we can see the checkbox of Enable Wireless AP. If you are unchecking that one, that Wi-Fi will be disabled automatically once after pressing Apply Changes button. If you want to activate second SSID, if you want to get one more Wi-Fi name and one more password, we need to choose SSID. Here we are able to see multiple SSID name. If I am selecting second one, I can enter new name and new password. And also we need to press the enable button. Then only the, the second Wi-Fi SSID will be enabled on. The same way we can activate on 2.4G and 5 giga wireless options. Here I am just showing basic settings of 2.5. So I am just going to 2.4G advanced option. The same way we can configure 5 giga Wi-Fi settings. If you want to change the IP address or IP address range, we need to select LAN, then IPv4. Here you are able to see IP range and DHCP options. Here you can manage DHCP and IP range. Here I am not changing any options. I am going to show you how to reserve an IP address using the MAC address. For reserving the IP address, you, we need to press MAC based assignment. Here we can add the MAC address and IP address. Once after adding this, if the PC or device is rebooting, the IP will remain same. The same system I am using for reserving the IP address. For that one, I need to use CMD. Then we need to find the MAC address of the PC. For that purpose, we need to type IP config slash wall. Using this command, we can find the MAC address of this PC. Once after, we need to add the IP reservation. We need to enter the MAC in the MAC address reservation point. And we need to enter the IP address. Here I am using the same IP address for reserving the IP address. Here I am showing you DMSZ configuration. For this purpose, we need to select security. Under security, we can see DMZ. Here you need to enter the IP address of DMZ server. Accept the port forwarded configuration. The rest all the port will be forwarded to DMZ server. For activating that one, enable the checkbox of DMZ host. 
then enter the DMS type A. Once after, we need to press Apply Changes button. If you want to disable, we can simply disable and then press Apply Changes button. Now we are going to check how to do the port forwarding in Pelton router. For this purpose, we need to select Application, then NAT. Here we can see Port Forwarding. First, we need to enable the Port Forwarding, then press the Apply Changes button. Here we can add the port forwarding. First I am doing the test and then enter the local IP address. Here my local IP is 192.168.1.2. Then enter the local port from beginning of ports and ending of port. Here I am using the same port so I am entering both ports are same. Some case we need to use bunch of port. On that time we can use start from and end to. Then we need to select the protocol. Here we can choose either TCP or UDP or both but in our case we need to use only TCP. Then remote IP address. If you want to filter the access we can enter the remote IP address. Only that particular IP can access this port externally. Here I am not restricting any IP address. Then enter the remote port from and remote port to. Remote port means external port for accessing the server. Here both remote port from and remote port to are same. So I am using the same. Instead of local ports, we can use remote port as different if you want. Here I am using the same port for local and remote. If you want to select the interface, we can select. Here I am using any. So it will it will applicable for all. Once Entering these all the details, we need to press the add button. Now our port forwarding is finished. This server we are able to access using the external port from outside. If you want to delete the port forwarding, we can select the selected policy and then press the delete button. If we are having multiple policies, we can we are able to select multiple policy, then press the delete all button. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please press the like button, share and subscribe.